What's going on guys and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. Batman was created by Bill Finger and first introduced in Detective Comics back in the late 30s. Almost like 100 years ago, it's crazy. And since then he's been kicking ass and taking names, but after all he is just a human being. And human beings are known to make a few mistakes here and there. So here to list off 10 of Batman's biggest mistakes, I'm Taylor McWaters, you're you. Let's dive in. Number 10, early killing. Okay, the Batman we all know is a lot different from the Batman that first came to light back in the day. For starters, the no killing rule wasn't there all the time. In the first few issues, Batman was throwing hands and smacking people with chairs, and of course, saving the day. But in Batman issue one, only 19 pages later, he's hanging a guy from a bat plane. And in issue 27, he pushes a guy into acid like acid, acid. And then in issue 29, he burns Dr. Death to death. Now at the time, this was how Batman got the job done, but looking back now with the new Batman that, you know, respects humans, seems totally off. Don't worry though, he makes quite a few mistakes in the recent comics too, and I'll be breaking down more of those very soon. But before we go to number nine, if you guys could please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because it really does help out the channel a lot. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. Now back to some more Batman mistakes. Number nine, breaking the penguin. Batman is a great detective and an equally skilled fighter. So watching his parents die at a young age showed him just how much damage one man can cause. So you would think being covered in armor, being absolutely ripped and being a skilled fighter, you would have some sort of an idea of the damage that you're doing. But if it's personal, that judgment might just be clouded. So in the Batman The Dark Knight issue two, we see Batman straight up torture the penguin. I mean, he breaks him one bone at a time. And he does this to get info on the whereabouts of Don Golden. So he tells Penguin to talk, like maybe once or twice, before he just starts breaking his bones. Thankfully, and I, this is a weird saying, but thankfully Killer Croc showed up. He came in to stop the detective from doing his business. I mean, thank God, or else who knows how far he would have gone. Bruce was well on his way to breaking more than just his bones. He was about to break his only rule. And that rule was the one we just talked about. Number eight, he trusted Selena Kyle. When The Dark Knight Rises hit the big screen in 2012, fans were excited to see the new additions to the team, like Tom Hardy as Bane or Anne Hathaway as Selena Kyle. But some fans weren't too pleased with the choices that Bruce Wayne made in this movie. I mean, the world's greatest detective was betrayed by Selena Kyle more than once in just one movie. I mean, for starters, she led him into the hardest fight he's ever had to face, one that ended with his back breaking. <laughs> All your money! But after that, when he returned to Gotham, he trusts her again, this time with his tech. Tech that she used to break Batman's only rule by killing Bane. She ends it with the bat bike, bam, right then and there. And she even explains how she's not a big fan of this rule. About the whole no guns thing. I'm not sure I feel as strongly about it as you do. I mean, sure, it had to be done, but if you were going to be okay with killing someone like Bane eventually, you could have solved this problem a long time ago. Number seven, Talia al Ghul. In Batman's Son of the Demon, written by Mike W. Barr, Batman falls for Talia al Ghul. I mean, of all the girls you can get in the world, okay, Bruce, sure, you know how to pick them. So Raz al Ghul is the leader of the League of Assassins. This guy trained Bruce. He's his teacher, and at the same time, he's an enemy due to his wild methods of getting things done. But he really wants Bruce and his daughter to have a kid. And in Batman's Son of the Demon, we also get to see that play out. So after the news breaks, even Raz is like, hey, we actually get along better as allies. Huh, what do you know? How bizarre. Batman didn't even know this kid was born. He was unaware of Damian Wayne until Talia introduced him to Bruce five years later. Now, Talia had used the League's scientific resources to speed up his aging, so he wasn't five. In fact, Damian was actually 10. And by then, he was, of course, a skilled fighter as well. So now you have this kid who has the exact opposites for parents. I mean, the one thing they do have in common is how good they are at fighting, so. Sure, you have that. He was actually quite eager to replace Tim Drake as Batman's wingman, so troubled Damian Wayne grabbed another Robin costume, slapped on some League of Assassins gear, and then took out the villain Spook. Does he arrest him, slap on the wrist, block and report his Instagram? No, none of the above. No, he actually cuts his head off. So that's certainly one way of serving up justice. I mean, the guy's wild. And at one point, he ended up sucker punching Tim Drake off of a T-Rex model. Just date other people, that's it. Just don't date anyone in your close circle. You're Batman, you know better. Number six, ignoring Blue Beetle. So back in Countdown to Infinite Crisis, Blue Beetle had actually approached his super friends and teammates after he discovered something called the OMAC Project. So he brought it to Batman's attention, but Bruce just doesn't give a damn. He brushes him off almost immediately. Okay, cool. Well, the OMAC Project, of course, turned out to be 
be something big and bad, and when Blue Beetle discovered it, he's all by himself, leading him to be killed. If only Batman just took him seriously in this moment, things would have turned out a lot less ugly. Also, I know Batman created this thing in the first place, so it's kind of fair that he didn't listen to him. But before Infinite Crisis, the Omax killed like a lot of people. You should have just given him at least two minutes to explain. Just fine, what is it? Okay, I'll actually check that out. That sounds concerning, thank you. That easy. Number five, passing the baton. Usually when you retire or quit, you're replaced with somebody who knows the job quite well. Somebody who's been with you along the journey that you will trust continues your legacy. Maybe like, I don't know, a sidekick? So after the Nightfall storyline when Batman got wrecked by Bane, he decided to pass on the Batman mantle to not Dick Grayson. No, instead he chose John Paul Valley, AKA Azriel. His run on Batman wasn't the same as Bruce. I mean, for starters, Azriel's methods were violent and irresponsible, which is pretty much the opposite of what we're going for here. He was, however, capable of defeating Bane with his new suit, so we'll give him that. But this guy thought that made him an all round better Batman and a permanent successor. So once Bruce recovered, he had to force Azrael to leave the position. So then a shame John Paul Valley returned to his Azrael days. Like imagine getting caught for a petty crime on one of those nights Azrael was patrolling. You think you were caught by a bad man and you're like, oh, thank God, wait, who's this guy? And then you just get your ass kicked. No way. Number four, Silver St. Cloud. Batman often has the best intentions. I mean, maybe he's pieced together this puzzle and he's super close to figuring it out. So he'll often just do stuff without consulting the team or asking questions because that's what detectives do. They keep their planning inside here. You got the element of surprise, makes sense. So the surprise to Silver St. Cloud when Batman started attacking her and ripping out her hair, I can only imagine how shocking that must have been. And it all takes place in Batman The Widening Guy or miniseries, when Bruce and Silver St. Cloud are seemingly really happy together. I mean, they're great. They're doing yoga on the beach, they're hanging out. And then he would go back and fight crime. He really was working hard and playing hard as well. So Aquaman rolls up to Bruce and he's shocked that one, he's swimming, and two, that he's swimming without a costume. Like he's not doing a mission or anything. He's just in the water for fun. And then Selena Kyle, of course, gets in Bruce's head once she hears about Bruce's lover, saying how she knows the real him and that she says she's willing to do what it takes to be with him, even digging up an old cape to fit the pitch, seeing as he likes capes and all. Then they both kiss, right in the middle of Selena asking Bruce if he's in love. I mean, that's already a mistake right there, but there's, there's some more stuff in this as a whole. Then in the last issue, Bruce pulls out a ring for Silver St. Cloud, and she's pumped. She even fills Alfred in on why she calls Batman Dee Dee, which is too much information, by the way. Ah, oh, it's like she was made for me, says Bruce, or made for me. Hmm. Then in the next page, he cuts off Alfred and Silver in traffic and proceeds to attack her, like pulling her hair, telling her to shut up, just beating her up, it's horrible. And then he pulls out a handy tool that confirms that she is indeed a human being. Instead of just pulling that tool out at the start, he does it after he pulls her hair and beats her up. I mean, you could have just asked Bruce. She was clearly quite open with the relationship. So maybe next time, just ask a few questions. Dee Dee. Number three, Stephanie Brown. So when Tim's father found out about his part-time job as Robin, he was forced to retire. So Stephanie went to surprise Tim at school to see this other female classmate was putting the moves on Tim. And she wasn't too pleased about that. So she broke it off with Tim, thinking that he'd been sneaking around behind her back. So she needed something else to focus on now. So she made this homemade Robin suit and snuck into the Batcave and demanded that Batman would make her the new Robin and train her. So Batman's like, okay, sure. Cut to several months of training and he gave her a costume similar to Tim's. So she rolled with him and the two actually did quite well together. Good call, Bruce. Then she disobeyed orders on a couple of missions and was promptly fired. No suit for you, give me that back. Now, this is where Batman goofs up. Because of this, Stephanie felt like she had to prove Batman, right? Which is an obvious first thing to do. You get fired, you're like, ah, oh, come on, I can do this, let's go. So she took one of his plans for the Gotham's underworld and tried to step up. Now, this unfortunately led to the events of Batman War Games, where Stephanie was captured by Black Mask, tortured, and then sadly died in a hospital with a failed Bruce Wayne by her side. Leslie Tompkins came in the picture too, and she sure didn't help. It was actually revealed that she had withheld the medical treatment that could have saved Stephanie in an attempt to make Bruce see the violence that he's caused and hang up the mantle. He didn't see it. He kept going. He was like, yeah, another Robin, another day. Let's go. Number two, firing Dick Grayson. This is a war, Dick, okay? Robin is my second, my lieutenant. Anything less than total devotion to this cause is simply wasting my time. You're fired, Dick. So these words echoed in Dick's head. It's never a good feeling being fired from a job, but fired from the role of a super sidekick? God, that's gotta hurt. So in Nightwing year one, Bruce finds out that Dick has been working part-time for the Teen Titans. So he delivers that line. I mean, getting fired for wanting to do more good. Okay, superhero 
stuff is weird. Okay, luckily Dick went on to become Nightwing and the two of them work it out eventually as time goes on. But I feel like we could have just saved a lot of time and heartache for this poor kid, especially if you ended up working together anyways. And finally, number one, Jason Todd. He was the child of Willis and Catherine Todd and post-crisis, Jason is known as impulsive, reckless, and full of rage. So Batman saw this and wanted him to channel that energy and be something better by becoming Robin. So we saw him stealing tires off the Batmobile and figured he was just this angry kid. Smart, yet angry. So Batman tried putting him in boarding school, but the school was actually a training ground for young criminals. And I didn't go to that school, are you kidding me? So it looks like Robin it is. So Batman asked Barbara Gordon to come out of retirement to keep an eye on him during a couple of missions. But she even warns Bruce of this darkness inside of him. She could see it. This darkness drove Jason to find his real mother who was being blackmailed by the Joker. And then the Joker ended up beating him to death. Batman arrives a little too late after a bomb had gone off and held the boy Wonder's body in his hands. So afterwards, he comes back as Red Hood to find that he's been replaced after his death by Tim Drake. Batman considers this one of his greatest failures, not properly training Jason as Robin, and I agree, hence why we put it at number one. Well guys, there you have it. Those are Batman's 10 biggest failures. Now, of course, he has tons more in the comics and movies, so comment down below your favorite failure, and I'll be sure to check it out and break it down in an upcoming video. Until then, stay home, stay safe, keep reading those comics, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.